Hello Bookles, my name is Cam and welcome to another video. I bet when you woke up this morning you didn't know that you were in for one hell of an education. You're lucky my friend, because today I'm telling you about my top 5 book to movie adaptation preferences. These are the 5 best movies that were adapted from a book. The best! The best! Hey Siri, what's my name? Since we friends, I get to call you Big Cammy C, the Wolf Prince of Booktube with the shit tasting clothing. I mean, um, roll the intro. Let's talk about some damn books, dude. Alrighty, so before we start, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. This is obviously my preferences, so these this top five choice is going to depend on my personal taste. When the video is done, if you didn't hear any of your top five uh, book to movie adaptations, chances are I might not have actually seen it. So, or I might not even know that it, the movie came from a book, or vice versa. So leave me a comment and let me know what your favourite was if you don't see it in this video. Another quick disclaimer, this is going to exclude comic books, just because that's a whole video in itself, and it's also excluding TV shows. It's exclusively books to movies. Films. Getting Straight Into It was a book I read when I was a little kid, but I actually didn't see the movie until not so long ago. It's got Bilbo Baggins in it, and it's got Professor Snape in it. Do you know what it is yet? This one is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. If you haven't seen it, or if you haven't read the book, I highly, highly recommend getting onto this. It's one of the wackiest fucking things you'll ever see. It's basically about a really vanilla little, um, English man who gets kind of snatched from his normal everyday life um, when planet Earth is destroyed for construction quite literally as as casually as a house would be knocked down for construction. It's just aliens come down to clear Earth out of the way. And this little English man gets taken into space and just goes on this kind of adventure with, um, you know, people like a depressed android that's voiced by Alan Rickman. It's, uh, it's also got Zoe Duchanel in it. Hubba hubba. It's hilarious. It is a really, really good movie, and the book was quite good too. I mean, the book didn't blow me away, but again, I was too young when I read it to really understand all of the innuendos, so maybe that's part of the reason. Number four is a movie you might not know was based on a book. It's called The Lovely Bones, and you're probably wondering why a movie where a child gets raped and murdered would be on my top five list. And the answer is just simply, it was a good movie. Not for that reason, though. Ooh. It was really beautifully put together, and it was, um... It just kind of fills you with this melancholy, and I mean, I actually haven't read the book. But, I did find out it came from a book before I watched the movie, and I kept that in mind. Um, while I was watching it, keep, I tried to keep in mind that it was being adapted from a narrative. Um, so it's basically about a girl who, unfortunately, is raped and murdered on her way home from school one day and the rest of the story is about her family dealing with this um, whereas they live pretty much right next door to the murderer um, and then the girl herself is actually still alive in a certain sense in a kind of ethereal dream world before she passes on to the other side and the story is still told from her perspective as a narrative in some senses. It's, it's hard to explain but it's it's a good watch. At least watch the trailer. Number three is a movie with a familiar face in it. I'm sure you know the the main actor here. This is in his earlier days though. Uh, I'll give you a hint. DO IT! The actor I'm talking about is Shia LaBeouf, and the movie is called Holes. This movie is just... It's such a good book. I mean, the book itself is really great. It's an amazing read for... Um, people going through that kind of transition stage of adolescence 
It teaches you about a lot of things like hard work, friendship, all that kind of stuff, while still having a really fun and adventurous narrative. And it, it kind of has the kids versus the grown ups vibe as well. So it gets kids reading this story. It got me reading this story, but I also feel that I drew a lot of good moral lessons from the story as well. And the movie reflected that brilliantly. It was almost, um, you know, dripped straight from the book onto the screen. It's just, it was funny, brilliant super sad at some parts. If you haven't seen Holes, I definitely recommend it. It's basically about a kid whose family is cursed with really bad luck and due to an unfortunate circumstance of him getting accidentally accused of stealing a really expensive pair of shoes that were for a charity, he actually goes to a juvie so to speak, which is like out in the desert and they just dig holes every day because the the warden, the warden of the Juvie is looking for something below the ground and that's all I can really say without spoiling it but it, it's so good and if you like feel-good movies or books about friendship and that kind of thing then this is one for you. Number two is such a good movie. Oh, I saw this movie when I was a little kid and it's still one of my all-time favorites. I guarantee you, you must have seen this movie or you must have at least heard about it. It's just it's just everywhere. It's actually on Netflix at the moment as well. The movie's called Matilda, and it's just so good. It was a Roald Dahl book, and I've mentioned it a heap of times, like in my five quotes video, I, I mentioned a quote from Matilda, but it's just brilliant. So it's basically about this girl who's born into a horrible family, kind of like the Dursleys from Harry Potter, except this is her actual biological family. So they treat her like garbage, and she to escape she goes into books, something which I'm sure a lot of the people watching this being it's booktube understand. So she goes into books to escape that and it turns out she's actually so smart that all of this kind of withheld intelligence converts into telekinetic powers so to speak. And then she ends up going to a school that her father puts her into for troubled kids and it's run by this just... It's run basically by Hodor's evil sister. She's just this massive lady who treats kids like absolute crap. She actually picks up one girl by the pigtails and throws her, so it like throws her over a fence and she nearly gets impaled on like a spiky pole. This isn't the type of movie I can imagine coming out these days without people, you know, blowing it out of proportion and saying there's child abuse. But it's so good, It's it's one of those movies that you can enjoy as a family and still kind of watch it on your own as a 23 year old single male in a one bedroom apartment. At least I hope that's fine to do. Last but not least, number one, what else did you think this was going to be? Lord of the Rings, bitch. Lord of the Rings is arguably the most universally loved and memorable and well known high fantasy series in the history of the world. I'm honest, I honestly don't feel that I'm exaggerating there. When you think high fantasy, the the one title that will come to everyone's mind at some point is Lord of the Rings. Of course I'm extremely biased because this is what got me really into reading and writing the Lord of the Rings series, or the Hobbit series technically, but um, this is my personal top five as well, so. So who gives a shit? If you haven't seen Lord of the Rings, I feel bad for you, son. You got 99 problems, and not having seen the Middle Earth movies is most definitely one. I could have put the Hobbit movies in this list as well because they're really good, but I feel that they kind of come as a bundle with The Lord of the Rings, and I didn't want to dork you guys out too much. There's no way to even begin to explain what this series is about without making a three hour video, so just please watch it. It's not only the best book to movie adaptation, but it's honestly the best trilogy in existence as far as movie as far as movies go, in my opinion. If I'm ever having a shit day where I just I can't get into my writing, I listen to Lord of the Rings music, or I watch the movies, or I watch a snippet from the movies, it never fails to inspire me. Those movies are it sparked the one thing in my life that I'm most passionate about, and that's reading and writing. Um yeah, that's that's it. I think I've geeked you guys out too much enough. Like I said, if there's any book to movie adaptations that I didn't mention, chances are I didn't know 
it was the movie was based on a book or chances are I haven't seen or even heard of it so please let me know what your favorites are in the comments below. As always guys thanks for watching I love ya. All my social media links are below check out some of my other videos and if you haven't already joined the Wolfpack please do so I would love to have you and for those of you that are in the Wolfpack I'll see you in the next video. Catch ya!